The worst Democrat in our lives was Jimmy Carter. Okay. You, yeah. You know I, what? No, wait, I, don't I, even, I, look, because I have to hear why. I'm going to have to hear why, because that's my least offensive. President. I might be able to jump in there uh, because, with you. Go for then it. you're too young to know. Okay. I am not. I know we've been through this before. You are. Okay. <laughs> look, Pete, Peter before said very effectively one word, and that word was austerity. Who do you think was the president who pushed, and not the idea, the word austerity in speeches in 1978 Jimmy as he Carter. put on his whatever Jimmy it was, Carter. cardigan I sweater, God, blah, God, blah, God, blah. God. It was Jimmy God, Carter. God, 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 God. Right. And then he brought Volcker in to the Federal Reserve, knowing that Volcker would, well, first, let's be clear. Carter turned his back on the labor movement in 78, the environmental movement in 78, and the consumer movement that of, Na of Ralph Nader literally turned his back, okay? There was legislation pending. He did nothing, zilch, okay, to, about it. Two, he and his family hated FDR, okay? They were not gonna go any kind of FDR route. That was pretty clear. Third, capital targeted him. This is the age of the uh, business roundtable. CEOs flew into DC, lobbied Congress, and pressured Carter. He didn't have to be pressured that much, Carter. And he opted to, he said, I'm going to pull all my political capital into giving Panama Canal back to Panama. If you like that idea, that's great. But frankly, not when you screw labor and everyone else at the same time. Doug Frazier, who was the head of the UAW at the time and, and was on something called the DuPont Commission, which was the Industrial Relations Commission of Capital and Labor, who was you know, supposed to talk about the state of America in those terms. He resigned from the commission and issued a public letter saying, I cannot serve on a commission with people who have declared, declared open class war on us, okay? This was Jimmy Carter. And then I'm leaving out something else. Well, I mean, I could go on. He brings in Volcker. With, they knew what they were gonna do. They were gonna, you, yeah. they were gonna literally right. screw the working class, period, okay? And, and they did it. And that's why in 1980, Reagan could never ever have won if it had not been that Carter was more Reagan at the outset, probably than Reagan had ever hoped to be. Harvey, how much different do you think 1980 would have been if Ted Kennedy was the nominee? Well, probably, okay, Ted Kennedy was more conservative than at that, at that phase than a lot of people realize, though healthcare was high on his agenda. But, but the, the key thing is, I, I think you've asked a good question, and I do think that if Carter had, if Kennedy had beaten Carter, I think they would have gone after Kennedy on moral grounds, period. Yes, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he couldn't have beaten Reagan. Look, people always said, well, who voted for Reagan? Look, you know, the older folks voted for Reagan. Well, actually, it's not the case. Millions of people just stayed home in 1980. I mean, if, if you're a union member, you're, you're a worker and you see what the Democrats have done, right? then you're either gonna be so angry you're gonna vote for Reagan, or more likely you're gonna stay home. And I wanna give a figure, and I could be wrong on this. My, I, I read somewhere it was like 10 million working people stayed home in that year. I, I Don't quote me on that, it's just a- Steve, I'm you had something a, you wanted to add about that, about Carter. Well, yeah, I, no, I just wanna tip my hat to him because I, I despise Joe Biden and I'm living through the Biden experience now, so it's a little bit more like the hot stove I know. But you're exactly right, though. I mean, all the history there, Volcker is Carter, all that stuff. That whole experience is all Jimmy Carter. He's a much better ex-president than a president. I'll leave it at that. He builds some good homes. We'll leave it at that. I mean, seriously, I mean, you can't knock his post, but he was a horrible president. And uh, it's just hard to remember that because Reagan did so much damage. And, and you see Democrats, the history of neoliberalism always starts with Ronald Reagan. They never give credit to Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy yeah, Carter- who started really the deregulation of, of finance? Who started Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Who started Jimmy. the deregulation of transportation? Jimmy. I mean- No, you, you're, see, I, I stand corrected, man. You are spot on. Thank you. Spot no, on. That's made my you day. You guys have met? You guys have met before, yes? Nope, never, but no, I'm going to talk to him in the future for sure. I love this guy. All right, so, okay, so we probably should- See, we've brought another group, of, another good group of- Yeah, uh, I, I was going to ask in the first place if you guys have ever met. So, Harvey, you don't yeah. know Steve. Steve goes on- Well, Steve looks Carter. familiar to me. I must have seen him on one of the shows. 
He has a few. He has a few things, and he's been on ours, but he has a few of his own things. And um, and he's also uh, does stuff with uh, Jordan Charlton's yeah, uh, status coach. Right. Uh, okay. And, well, that could easily be one of the. And and what Elizabeth brought up is very true. There were a lot of college students voting for Reagan. In many ways, uh, the the whole Trump phenomenon in sixteen is very parallel to what happened with Reagan winning in eighty. Uh, this whole idea, as you just pointed out, Harvey, which I was not actually very well aware of. Um, I knew about Reagan, uh, uh, Democrats for Reagan. I know that that was a big thing. But this whole idea of a lot of the labor unions and and I think that. Uh, oh, by the way, the Democrats for Re- Reagan later became Jews for Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's well, a- and they and they make about as much sense, except for now Democrats for Reagan does make sense. Now, by the way, I have not been drinking. This is I'm just I'm so caught off guard and I didn't prepare since I didn't know. I thought I was going to talk about something else. I'll I'm just. Up. Stream of consciousness right now. No, let, let, me, let me throw a stream of consciousness thing out yeah. there that I know Jen will enjoy real quick, and you might as well. I just found out that in the state of Pennsylvania, the actual medical marijuana law does not allow you to put flame to flower. It must be vaporized. In what world does that? It literally is illegal. You, you got medical marijuana, but if you're caught smoking it in a bowl or in a bong, it's illegal. It's fine if you vaporize it, but otherwise it's illegal. You could, I, I kid you not. And, and from what I understand, when you go to your dispensary in Pennsylvania, you still can get a DWI if your bag, even sealed and then whatever, is within arm's distance of you. It must be beyond arm's distance or you will get a DWI. Anyway, I'm sorry, just an absurd. That's funny when you say all that because Wisconsin, there's, there's, no, there's just no legal grass. But it's so funny. <laughs> as, I mean, we live close enough to Michigan. There's billboards, you know. Closer always, than you think. You know what? Everywhere I live in my life, there's legal grass. It might not be legal for all, but it's legal for where it needs to be legal. For one. You know what I mean? <laughs> for, for, for me. And I will say the idea that you can't light flowers. Well, you're a law unto yourself. I like that. I, I am I am an island unto myself. An uh, no, I just, I just, oh, that's privilege. That's privilege. Oh, well, and sorry. Yeah, it, right. It, right. It's, it's, it is what it is. Like that I feel like I've always been comfortable doing that, even though it's not legal. It's, it's privilege. It's disgusting, but it is true. Um, but like there very well could be a law like that. Like that makes sense. And I'll tell you why. Like I'm sitting here thinking, why would they care if you light flower versus if you vape? Like why would they care? It's more money if you vape. Because if you vape, if you vape, a lot of people, instead of grinding, what they'll do is they'll just buy the cartridges, which are inherently more product, more produced, more money. And also the vaping apparatus, you have to spend money to vape. Like if you just have flour, all you need is rolling papers, right? Like it, it's not as it's not as profitable of an industry. That's that true. would be my guess, because it sure as hell is not that they're concerned about your health. Because by <laughs> the way, actually vaping is considered worse health wise. Um, in terms of marijuana than just smoking it. So it's oh, weird. I, 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 I'm just saying, so they don't care about your health. No, okay. and again, what they care about is profit. Uh, ultimately, we have a for-profit prison industrial complex, and that's why you punish people for smoking cannabis, which gets you away from prescription drugs, which is how Big Pharma makes their kill. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.